Hi everyone, my name is Vip. In this tutorial, we will create a dynamic slideshow animation in After Effects. Start by selecting some layers. Confirm your selection by opening the grid settings dialog. Make sure layers is selected since our items are in the layers panel. Next, choose a distribution method. In rows mode, items will flow from left to right. While in columns mode, items will flow from top to bottom. I'll keep it on rows and set how many items you want per row or column based on the selected mode here. I will set it to 10 here. Set the value of set frames by to number of items and enable the visible all checkbox. All these settings can be adjusted later using the grid preset controls. The add frame features checkbox is enabled. It adds frame features selected here to the grid frames. We can also add these later. I will add the mask frame feature to clip items. Now click on the create grid button to generate the grid. You can see the grid has been created with 10 images in each row. As we specified here. Because we have added the mask frame feature, items fitting is set to fill the frame. Which scales the items proportionally to completely fill their grid frames. If you choose fit to frame, then you can see the items fit proportionally within their frames without exceeding their boundaries. This depends on whether you need the mask frame feature based on the selected items fitting option. To learn more about grid and items fitting options, check out the video on frame size calculations and fitting options. I will set it back to fill the frame. Enabling the visible all checkbox in the grid settings dialog while creating the grid fits items based on the items per row column in the selected distribution direction. Since rows distribution is selected, so visible per row was set to the same value. The other direction value is calculated automatically to fit the remaining items inside the composition. In our case, it is set to 4. I set it to 4 by 4. You can see the extra items are now outside the composition. Whatever direction is selected here, make sure the number of visible items in that direction don't exceed this value. Otherwise, it will create blank frames because we don't have enough items to make visible in that row or column. Or you will need to increase this value accordingly. If you choose the frame size values method, you can calculate frames based on the exact pixel dimensions. You can also fit the entire grid to the composition using any of the grid fitting options. However, this will also scale all the grid frames. As you can see here, although the frames have a width and height of 1920 by 1920, they are scaled to fit the grid. And these pixel values act more as ratio between width and height. So choose the no fitting grid fitting option if you want to use exact pixel dimensions. And to calculate frames for the grid, you can divide the composition's width by the number of items per row and its height by the number of items per column. In number of items method, margins are automatically calculated. However, in the frame size values method, you will need to include margins in your frame size calculations. Also, in the number of items method, there is no need to fit the grid to the composition. Instead, simply select the number of items you want to fit inside the composition. To learn more about frames and how to calculate frame sizes and the differences between both methods, check out the video on frame size calculations and fitting options. You will see a card at the top as well or find the link in the description. I'll set it back to the number of items method. Now let's animate the grid. We will start with the progressive shift animation with groups of two rows each as specified here. I will set a keyframe at 0 seconds and add another one at 8 seconds. Let's decrease the value to move it in the negative direction.
Let's preview the animation. Next, I will set the number of rows per group to 4 and play it again. You can see the 4 rows are moving progressively now. Now I will remove these keyframes and collapse these properties. You can also add margins between items. Let's now try the offset animation. Since we need to move rows in both directions, we will center the grid first as currently it is aligned to the left of the composition. I go to the transform properties and move the position x to the left to center it approximately. Let's zoom in and adjust the position to achieve a nearly perfect center. Now let's add an offset animation using the offset x slider. I will add the first keyframe at the start. But first I will move it in the opposite direction to establish a starting point and to give the animation some extra duration. Now add a second keyframe after 20 seconds and move the items to the opposite side. I will use a negative value to move in the negative direction. Let's play the animation. You can explore the other grid controller properties. You can also zoom an item into the center but first we need to check its index by selecting it. For example, we want to zoom this item and its index is 15. I will go back to the grid controller and set the index 15 here. Now if we increase the zoom value, you can see the item zoom into the scene. But to keep the zoomed layer on top, we need to convert the grid to 3D by enabling the 3D switch for all these layers. Or use the grid utility by going into the additional utilities dialog and clicking on convert to 3D. Now the zoomed layer will always stay on top of other layers. We can also animate the zoom while the grid is animating. I will reset the zoom back to zero. Similarly, we can animate other transform properties with or without delays. We can also round the corners of any frame features we have added. In our case, we have only added masks. I have tried to keep this tutorial concise while providing you with everything essential to create a simple dynamic slideshow animation. The possibilities are endless, explore various property combinations to craft your unique animation. To learn more about all the grid controller properties, you can watch the dedicated tutorials available on the product page. I will leave the links in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for all future updates. See you soon.